Basketball fans, this is Don Binks along with Carson Byers, and we are live at Smoky Valley Gym for Senior Night 2019. It just doesn't hardly seem like it could be Senior Night already, but uh, with three games remaining on the road, this is our last home game of the regular season. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how the how the schedule's kind of been shaken up, and yeah, that month of January went quick. We're already well into February here, and a lot of basketball remains, but it'll be a fun night here, Senior Night at home. It is, and the Pratt Greenbacks come in, and the big news out of Pratt is that uh, former Bethany College player and former Bethany College coach Jamie Cruz has resigned from coaching at Pratt. He's been there six years and won a state title, runner-up last year, and he's moving on to Campus High School in Hayesville. So uh, I don't know how that will affect the basketball team, but it certainly has the rumor mill flying around that uh, big change is going on. I was talking to their radio guy, and he said, it's like losing one of my own kids. <laughs> so a lot of things going on. But tonight it's basketball, and the Pratt girls come in with an 11-5 and record. They've got a Bethany connection as well. Bethany uh, grad and national tournament team runner-up, uh, Dustin Hildebrand, their coach, was playing for Bethany when I was broadcasting with Bethany. So I broadcast him as a player. And then, of course, one of his assistant coaches, is Amy Cruz, who also played basketball at Bethany. So it's a real special connection for me tonight, and uh, I guess we still have to broadcast basketball. Yeah, we do, and it, it, they're playing another good Pratt team here tonight at home, a, a Pratt team that's going to – Pratt just always seems to be physical. They always seem to play hard. That's just kind of the nature you know, of their athletic program. So uh, another great test tonight. It will be. they got a couple of big girls, so we're going to have to play better. But, but we're coming off a win. We played well against Lions the other night, got a – Scored over 50 points again, so we should be coming in on a high, except for we had to miss two practices because of the weather. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, I, I think they always shoot well when I'm not here. They've scored over 50 <laughs> the two times that I, have, that I haven't been here, and so, uh, but, yeah, those snow days kind of kind of mess up the funk of the week here, but, but I think they're going to be ready to go, and maybe that rest will help them out a little bit. And with the student managers, they got seven bas- basketball girls that we have to recognize tonight, so... Lots of stuff going on at Smoky Valley and Pratt coming up here in just a little bit. We'll take our first time out, come back, and talk a little bit about scoring for both teams. You're listening to Smoky Valley Basketball. It's tough out there. Trying to stretch every paycheck a little further than the last one, it means cutting costs. And one of the best places to start is at the State Farm Office for Anthony Hopkins and Ellsworth. Because he'll do a free discount double check to make sure you're getting the car insurance discounts you deserve. Sometimes those can be up to 40%. So give State Farm agent Anthony Hopkins a call today. Because being there to help keep more money in your pocket is why he's there. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I really appreciate the faculty and staff here at Bethany. They care about their students and they're helping them achieve their goals and to be successful. This is a Christian-based college and I felt that he was in the right hands when I left him here. We chose Bethany College so my son could have a good life. If you want inspired learning at an affordable price, choose Bethany College. Learn more about your good life at bethanylb.edu. Farley's Bar and Grill in downtown Lindsborg is your game day headquarters. Come try their Monte Crisco or other specialty menu items. Farley's Bar and Grill, located at 101 North Main Street in Lindsborg, proudly supporting the Smoky Valley Vikings and Bethany Swedes. Welcome back to Smoky Valley, Jim. The Viking girls come in with a 4-12 and record opposite of Pratt with an 11-5 and record. Vikings are led in scoring by Ellie Brumbaugh, who had a, was in double figures the other night, followed closely by Carrington Haxton and Bree Franklin getting closer to get back in the lineup, but she's not available yet tonight. But also in there is Kira Haxton at 3.8. 2.9 for Ashlyn Bryant, who's come in, and she was in double figures the other night as well. She's starting to play better, getting a few more minutes, and uh, kind of just seems to be one of the ones that's helping the girls play good. Yeah, it's great to see some girls in double figures there. That just means they're playing aggressive and taking shots that they can make. Great to see Ellie double figures, and yeah, Ashlyn, you know, anybody that can come in and shoot from the outside is going to help this team a lot. 
Claire Broxterman has also gotten some good minutes, as has Maria April. She got to start the other night. She's a very good defensive player. She doesn't score a lot, but her defense will be valuable tonight in keeping Pratt off the boards. Yeah, she's a solid rebounder, and they're going to have their hands full down low with Pratt tonight. they got a, a couple pretty tall girls down there, so Lana's going to have to play well down low. Maria's going to have to play well, and Claire Broxterman's going to have to play well uh, to contain those girls on the defensive end. McGowan is their leading scorer at 11 points per game, followed by Rasmussen. She sounds like she should be a Swedish player <laughs> at 8.7 points per game, and a couple of them in the six to six and a half points, Maydew and Stat. So they only go about six deep on their bench, and so the Vikings are going to have to keep those four for sure in line. We'll take another timeout. I also got an interview with Coach Vanderwig a little bit earlier today. We'll have that for you. You're listening to Smoky Valley Basketball back right after this. Game day starts and finishes at Farley's Bar and Grill in downtown Lindsborg. Located at 101 North Main, this upscale, one-of-a-kind establishment offers a wide variety of drink and food specials. Come try their jalapeno poppers coconut chicken tenders or their classic Monte Crisco. Then wash it down with an ice cold beer or tall glass of wine. Farley's Bar and Grill at the corner of Lincoln and Main in downtown Lindsborg. Farley's, your game day headquarters for the Smoky Valley Vikings and Bethany Swedes. And welcome back to more Viking pregame. Don Binks along with Coach Doug Snyder as you get to, uh, well it's kind of a complicated senior night tonight. You get a good win again. People's Bank and Trust is proud to support the Lindsberg community and the athletes at Smoky Valley High School and Bethany College. I'm Ryan Beard, branch manager at the Lindsberg location for People's Bank and Trust, a proud native of Lindsberg, and I'm ready to be your banker. People's Bank and Trust, meeting the needs of our community and always improving the way we do business. Located at 201 South Main in Lindsberg, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Go Vikes and go Swedes. Did you know you can purchase custom etched glassware at the Hemsloyd? It's a perfect one-of-a-kind gift. Hemsloyd Scandinavian Specialties and GlassDecorators.com. Supporting Smoky Valley and Bethany Athletics since 1984. And welcome back to more Viking pregame. Don Binks along with Coach Doug Snyder as you get to, well, it's kind of a complicated senior night tonight. Smoky Valley Gym. And welcome back to Smoky Valley Gym. Don Binks along with... Carson Byers got Jared Bates working the controls for us once again. Also want to thank our sponsors, Harry Malari, CNL Heating and Cooling, People's Bank and Trust, Yoder Lawn and Tree Care, Farmers State Bank, Arnreiner CPA, Smoky Valley Booster Club, Gallant Tire and Auto, Scott's, Lindsberg Family Dental Care, Viking Auto, Bank of Tescott, Paul Mari for your Smoky Valley real estate needs, Dr. Daryl Loader, and Midway Motors. Viking Girls, well, they're still in the cellar of the eight-team regional Norton is the top team at 14 and 2, followed by Russell at 12 and 4. TMP Marion out of Hayes is third at 11 and 4 in southeast of Saline, who we've played a couple of times this year, is at 9 and 5. Phillipsburg then is at 10 and 7. Poisonton at 5 and 9. Lions at 5 and 11. And Smoky Valley Girls now at 4 and 12. So they've got uh, they've got some work to do to figure out a way not to have to travel to Norton. Yeah, they do. And and tonight, you know, at home, your last home game, this would be a good one to steal because now you got to go on the road the next three games. But you're going to have to finish strong here if you want to improve that standing. And all three, including four, including tonight, teams are state-ranked. Pratt is state-ranked, as is Nickerson, who we play on Tuesday, then Halstead on Friday, and then finish up at Haven. So, yeah, we don't have any easy games left. So 
we're probably not going to make it out of the cellar and going to have to go to Norton, but we'll just have to deal with that when we get there. But but our girls are capable of playing. And when those outside shots like you talking about, you get Kira and Carrington and Ellie making those three-pointers, that, that certainly gives you a lot of confidence. Yeah, this team, you know, offensively struggles at time, but they really have all the tools, you know, in terms of, of girls out there that can do a lot of different things for them. They got the tools to be a good offensive team, and when those shots are falling, you know, they have those 50-point games. They're able to beat a team like Heston. So, you know, this team, if they can put it all together on one night, they're, they're a pretty good basketball team. They are, and it's always more difficult to win on the road. Three of the Vikings' wins this year have been at home. One was at the Southeast against uh, at Sterling Invitational Tournament against Lions. So I asked Coach the other night after, I said, what is, what is it about Lions that makes it, why do you play so good against Lions? He didn't have an answer. It just you never know. Yeah, you, you don't. And tonight, your, your last home game, senior night, there's going to be a lot of more motivation with that, you know, in terms of these senior girls wanting to go out on a high note. So hopefully they can play with a little fire and get off to a, a good start like they did against Larner a week ago. They got off to a good start like that. Couldn't quite finish the game, but let's see if they can get off to another good start and, and, and hold on to that lead. We'll have the senior recognition between the boys and the girls game, but for the girls games, it's Maria April, Lana Clark, Paige Clark, who's one of the managers, Lindsey Gerlock, Kira Hexton, Emmy Riles, and Haven Shugan are the girls that will be recognized tonight. Let's take one final one-minute timeout. When we come back, we'll have starters and the tip-off of tonight's game. You're listening to Smoky Valley Basketball. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you in part by the Bank of Tescott. Generations of confidence, relationships for life. With locations in Lincoln, Salina, Tescott, and Lindsborg. The Bank of Tescott, member FDIC. We're the Bank of Tescott. Qualifications and rules apply. See institution for details. Ask for Casasa. Warning. Free Casasa checking may lead to a rise in disposable income due to cashback on everyday debit card purchases, refunds on ATM fees, and elimination of so-called service fees. Increased satisfaction may result while operating your debit card. If you suffer from chronic money loss, search for Casasa online. This has been a financial health advisory courtesy of Casasa. It's like money medicine for your shopping habit. Offered locally at the Bank of Tescott. Member FDIC. The Quarterback Club of Lindsborg is proud to support athletics in the Smoky Valley. Join us each Tuesday at 7 a.m. in the Bethany College Cafeteria to hear from all the Vikings and Swedes sports coaches. This evening is Smoky Valley High School senior, Michaela Outland.
Smoky Valley Gym. It's time for starting lineups. How about the Pratt Greenbacks? Yeah, Pratt's going to start 5'6", senior Allison McGowan. 5'4", uh, junior Danielle Stats. 6'0", senior Reagan Hoover. 5'10", se senior Caitlin Rasmussen. And a six foot senior, Kirsten Maydew. So for Bethany alum, the graduate, Dustin Hildebrand, he'll send out McGowan, Stats, Hoover, Rasmussen, and Maydew. And how about our Vikings tonight? The Vikings start a 5'7 senior, Maria Apel. A 5'7 senior, Haven Shugren. A 5'5 senior, Lindsey Gerlock. A 5'6 senior, Kira Haxton. And a 5'7 senior, Lana Clark. Coach Larry Vanderweg will send out April, Shugren, Gerlock, Haxton, and Clark. All five seniors tonight getting the start. Emmy Riles is hurt, so she is not playing anymore this year. And then um, Paige Clark, Lana's twin sister, she is does the stats and helps us being the manager. She is also going to be recognized later tonight. And it's the Vikings against the Greenbacks here from the Smoky Valley Gym. Last night of the regular season here as the Vikings will be on the road next week, Tuesday at Nickerson, Friday at Halstead, and then finish up the following Tuesday at Haven. So it'll be a chance to go down and see their new gym at Haven. They Just getting done last year when we played there, or two years ago, I guess it was, when we played there. Anyway, the last time we were there, they were about a month away from opening up, and we didn't get to use it yet, so it'll be fun to go see that new facility there. It's right, kind of right behind their other one, so that'll be fun. But here it's the Vikings have to take care of the Pratt Greenbacks, and they go about six deep, Coach told me, so we'll see. And they got some size out there. Got a couple of good bit tall girls, Maydew and number 14, Hoover, are both taller than any of our girls. So it'll be Maria Apel jumping against Maydew. Vikings will be shooting at the east end of the court. Bad toss by the official right to Pratt. And we are underway. Sit back and enjoy some good basketball. Rasmussen has it on the dribble side of the key. It comes over to their leading scorer, McGowan. McGowan on the dribble drive. Kick it out. Three-pointer. No. Rebound over the back and out of bounds. It'll belong to the Vikings. Didn't get a foul on Hoover. But she didn't get the ball rebounded either, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Pratt. Lady official again tonight. The one that's related to the Anderson family. Trap right there by Gerlock. Gets it over to Kira. Kira with it. Back to Gerlock. They're outside. Pratt plays a 1-3-1 trapping zone. Shugren has it inside and stolen away, but Lana hustles for it. And... Ball knocked loose and touched last by Pratt before it goes out of bounds, so it'll stay with the Vikings. I like the pass. It was just a little bit late. Yeah, I was just about to say I like that idea to get the ball in the middle of this 1-3-1 zone at the high post. Out top it goes to April. She'll drive the side of the lane. Shot blocked out of bounds by Maydew. It'll stay with the Vikings. Maria needs to, to use her speech. She's got a little bit of quickness on these, on these Pratt posts. She needs to use that. Kira put it in play again, looking, looking. Going to go way out deep to Gerlock. Gerlock with it on the dribble between the circles to reset the offense to Kira. She's wearing some kind of a shoulder brace. I don't know if she's had some shoulder issues there with the dislocation or not. Here's Shugan with it. Back over it goes to Kira. Kira inside to Clark. Back to Kira on the left-handed dribble. Out to April. April kick out in the lane. Over to Clark. Around to Gerlock to reset. One minute gone. No score yet here from Viking Jim on senior night. Clark has it at the elbow, kick out to Kira. It's a screen from Kira, she'll launch a three ball, no rebound, Vikings, Haven Shugan saves it to Gerlock. They get another chance. Good offensive rebound by the Vikings, keeping the possession alive. On the weave, it's knocked away by Pratt, it'll stay with the Vikings. Kira still on the dribble, gets it off to Gerlock. Gerlock spins back inside, looking for April, not there. Goes out to Shugren instead. 6.20 to go. Vikings still in this long possession. Out it goes and stolen away. That time it got a hand on it, and Vikings turned it over. A long, long possession, but it doesn't end up in any points. Still no score here. McGowan gets it off to Rasmussen. Rasmussen on the give and go on the other side. Gets it off to Stats. Stats shot, no. Rebound, good box Great out. Great position, yeah, by Lindsay. By Gerlock. Quickly up to Gerlock, stolen away by McGowan. One on one break. McGowan has it knocked away by Kira Haxton. 
Haxton with a good defensive set there. Here comes to Gerlock, looking for Clark, goes to her on the baseline. Clark with the dribble, loses the handle, and has it stolen away. Two turnovers for the Vikings, one for Pratt. Still no score. As Stats brings it across the timeline, far side it goes to Rasmussen. Rasmussen cross court to McGowan, inside shot, missing, rebound Maydew over the back, missing, rebound Shugan. Good effort by the Vikings. Great rotations down there by Lana. Still no score. Gerlock shot from the baseline, short, rebound inside the big girl, Hoover, and she clears it out to Stats. Stats with the dribble drive. Her shot missing, rebound. Last touch by the Vikings. Substitutions now. Carrington and Brockstroman in. A good minutes for both Clark and Shugren. Ellie Brumbaugh has not checked in yet for the Vikings. Somebody came in for, that's fin, Fincham, number five Fincham. Who made that basket? Yeah, that's Rasmussen. Rasmussen with the two points to give Pratt the first points of the ball game at the 446 mark. Gerlock with it outside, goes into Brockstroman. Claire, kick on baseline to Carrington. Carrington trying to penetrate, gets it out to Gerlock. Her shot, yeah. good. Way to step in that shot by Lindsay. Good movement by the Vikings to get the open look, tying the game up at 2-2. Fincham with it on the dribble, top of the key, pulls up, gets it off to McGowan. McGowan looks at a three. No, rebound, Maydew and Brockshaman. Maydew shot, got it to go. Well, Maydew gives Pratt back the lead at 4-2. to two. Nobody scored for a minute or two and a half, or almost three minutes, and now both teams have scored. There's Gerlock with it in the front court. Baseline it goes to Kierington, out to Kira, back to Gerlock. Inside to Kierington, back out to Kira. Baseline to Maria Apel. Apel trying to get somewhere. She's really pressured on the double team. Gets it out to Kira finally. Out to Kierington. Long two. Good. Kierington hits the outside the free throw line jumper at the 330 mark to tie the game up at 4-4. Into Maydew. Inside one foot in the lane and gets it off to Rasmussen. Out to Maydew. Cross court it goes to Fincham. Loses the handle out of bounds. And the official, well, she wasn't standing out of bounds. I guess it wasn't out of bounds. I thought she had one foot out of bounds, which would make her out of bounds. But the Vikings get the turnover. Is that two? Yeah. Carrington baseline dribble drive. Kick out to Maria. Wanted to shoot, but didn't. Now she will go in the lane and shoot. Too strong. Rebound. Carrington knocks it away. And saves it. The Vikings get the save on the possession. Around it goes to Gearlock. 2.50 left to go, first quarter. Kira with it outside, guarded by Rasmussen. They go a man-to-man possession. They primarily play zone, but this time they're man-to-man. Here's Gerlock. Looked at a shot, didn't take it. Off to Brockstroman. Back to Gerlock. Gerlock with it on the dribble. Back to Haxon, top of the key to reset. With the dribble toward the bench. Gets it off to Carrington. Carrington on the dribble. Wants to go cross and get in the lane, but didn't. Gerlock now on the penetration, now pivot. Back inside, there goes to Maria, off to Brockstroman. Out to Carrington, her shot. Good, to two. Carrington with another basket off of the bench tonight. And it's a 2.05 mark. The Vikings are up 6-4. to four. Vikings are reinventing that mid-range jumper. Inside it goes to Maydew, her shot. Boy, it's hard to stop that one. Maydew ties the game up at 6-6, 150 to go. They say they got eight. It's not right, is it? Well, I have a for six, but 6-6, six, six, yeah. Gerlock with it on the dribble. Though. There, they correct it back to 6-6. Six, six. Baseline two. Oh, good look by Gerlock, but Maydew's long hands got in there to turn it over. Third or fourth? That's four. Four on the Vikings. Pratt with it out top. Rasmussen near side to McGowan. Got a screen from Maydew. Cross court it goes to Fincham. Fincham with it. Wanting to go cross court but doesn't. Now goes to McGowan out top of the key underneath the Rasmussen. Her six-footer baseline shot missing. Rebound. And the Vikings hustle to save it. 
Get it to Kira. Carrington showing a lot of good speed and hustle. Inside it goes to Brockstrom. And her shot up. No. Rebound. Pratt. Six, six time with a minute to go here in the first quarter. McGowan wanted to go cross court. Didn't. Goes instead to Fincham out top between the circles. They'll reset their offense. Fincham on the dribble. Baseline shot. Rasmussen. Three ball. Good. Rasmussen knocks down a three. Nine for Pratt. Six for Smoky Valley with 35 seconds to go. Off the Gerlock. Gets double teamed out top and has it knocked away, but saves it by Kira. Kira with it on the dribble still. Back over to Gerlock. Near side to Apel. Apel back out to Gerlock. 15 seconds left to go. First quarter action. Kira with it on the dribble. Kirrington baseline corner. Dribbles inside, has it knocked away. Just a little tap and it hit her knee. There's McGowan. Good defense. Vikings don't go in, and it doesn't. And we are at the end of the first quarter. Pratt leads it 9-6. to six. Back with quarter number two right after this. Lindsborg Community Hospital and Family Health Care Clinic. Supporting concussion safety and impact testing for all athletes who call the Smoky Valley home. Do you feel the need for seed? Grow stronger and prosper longer with Phelps Seed. They're your go-to source for premium quality Pioneer brand corn, soybean, milo, and sunflower seed, along with wheat, cover crop, and forage seeds. If you're in the need, trust in Phelps Seed with you from the word go. Welcome back to Milky Valley Gym tomorrow, or is it Monday? When is the JV Boys Tournament? Not sure. I think it's, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. I think they I play think so. tomorrow at Lions, I believe. Yeah. They might have to go back Monday, though, for so Maybe a, that's a what it is. One, game, around, so. one game tomorrow, one game Monday. Yeah. Lots of things going on. Wrestling. Do they have any regular season they're matches at, left? They're at, they're at league today, actually, today. right now. I think they're tied for second right now, so... And that is at? That is at? Nickerson. Um. Okay. Ashland Bryant, when we figure out where that is, and Ellie Brumbaugh have both come back in, or in for the first time. Here's Bryant, baseline, Shugren shot, in there. The two by Haven Shugren. First, first points of the quarter belong to the Vikings at the 740 mark. Out it goes to McGowan. Her dribble drive against Ellie. Pass off to Maydu. Good defense by Carrington. Kick out to Rasmussen. She's going to launch another three. She made one already. And the Vikings, Brockstroman, comes away with the rebound. Girls in JV action won here before the start of this game by the score of 42-35. So good victory by the JV girls. Bryant still on the dribble now. She'll launch a shot. No. Rebound Maydu inside. Pretty hard to argue with her. And now we got a reach-in foul on Carrington. She had the ball, but she gets called for the reach-in foul. First. First team foul on either team. Wow. Yeah. Nobody fouled in the first quarter. That's pretty amazing. Of course, Ellie wasn't in. Ellie gets a, <laughs> usually gets a couple of quick fouls. She's in there now guarding McGowan. Across the timeline is stats. To Dr. Rasmussen, her floater in the lane. No, but a foul. And two free throws coming up for Rasmussen. Rasmussen the line to shoot two. We got free throw shooting shots here, percentages, and Rasmussen knocks that down. She is a 61% free throw shooter. I didn't say how many she shot, but she makes the first and makes them both. Looks like a really good free throw shooter to me. Hoover back in, may do out. Vikings get it in. Carrington now off to the races in the middle of the lane. It's it off to Brockstroman. Her shot partially blocked, but Carrington right there with the rebound. Carrington up. Yeah. Good. 
Purrington having a good game here tonight. Yeah, she really is. She's she's matching that size that Pratt's got with her quickness and getting those those scrum buckets. 10-11, Vikings trail by one. Rasmussen with it for Pratt outside. Rasmussen on the dribble drive, and boy, got it to stay. Rasmussen is not one of their leading scorers, although she scores 8.9 points per game. She has got nine already. Ashlyn Bryant with it outside. Pratt now ahead in the game by the score of 13 to 10. Even Shugan with it baseline gets it back to Ellie, knocked away by Rasmussen. It'll stay with Smoky Valley. Yeah, you can't. You got to throw those passes a little bit crisper against this aggressive Pratt zone. They're in the passing lanes. Got to be careful there. Kira with it. Or Kira comes in uh, for Kirrington, and Kira goes back court. I don't think she knew exactly where she was on the court, maybe. Unforced turnover number six. Six. Pratt has. Uh, I am for just three. Stats across the timeline goes to Rasmussen. She's been their leading scorer so far in this game. Gets it off to McGowan. McGowan, who is their leading scorer, Vikings have held her scoreless so far. Rasmussen on the dribble out to McGowan. Her baseline drive cut off by Brumbaugh. Good defense, Ellie. McGowan shot, missing badly. Rebound, Kira. That's great defense on good, McGowan. Good job by Ellie Brumbaugh. 13-10, Vikings trail by three. Brumbaugh, baseline dribble, gets it off to Brockstroman. Her shot. Oh, man, a lot of contact there. They let it go. Not much calls on the dribble drive. There's uh, losing the ball out of bounds is stats. She kind of brushed alongside of one of the Viking players and ended up falling down, but they just said it's out of bounds. She initiated all that contact, so I don't disagree with that call. If you can't listen to us only on the radio, listen to us and watch us at live.smokyvalley.org. Thanks to Mike Rose and his crew for bringing that production to all of our home games. Ellie gets trapped and the ball knocked out of bounds by Pratt. It'll stay with Smoky Valley. 5.04 to go, second quarter. 13 for Pratt, 10 for Smoky Valley. April back in and sugaring out. April did a really good job in that first quarter and just battling down low. April and Ryan, Bryant, Haxton, and Brumbaugh on the court for Smoky Valley. Back to Brumbaugh. He gets trapped, but gets out of the trap on the dribble. Cross court, it goes to April. Back to Brumbaugh. Shot just inside the three point line, missing. Rebound. The tall girl, Hoover, just can't. We just can't out jump those two big girls inside. Stats with it. Gets it off to Fincham. Fincham looks at a three. No rebound. Vikings. Hoover mistimed her jump, and the Vikings come away with the ball. Kira Haxon with it outside. Kirrington back in. She's been the Vikings' offense so far tonight. Back to Kira. Back to Bryant, three-pointer, in and out, no good. Rebound, Maydew inside. Fincham with it now right in front of the Viking bench to the top of the key, kick out to Stats. 4.08 to go, Stats in the lane, little shots rattling in and then back out and then the end. Stats gets her first basket, and it's 15 to 10 now. Low-scoring game at the four-minute mark. Yeah, and a quick game with not many fouls. Not much stoppage of play whatsoever. And we have a foul call. Finally, a foul called on Pratt. That foul on Hoover, the big girl inside. Kira to put it in play, looking, and it got to go in deep and does to Kirrington. Kirrington dribble drive off to Ryan. Ryan out to Gerlock. Gerlock with the dribble to reset the offense to Kira. Kira on the penetration. Kick it out. No, she keeps the dribble. Now out to Kirrington. Shot missing. I think it was either a little contact on the ball or the elbow, but maybe just the ball. And Pratt comes away with it on their front in their front court. Off it goes to McGowan, gets a screen from Maydew. 
Inside it goes to Maydew. Her shot up. Wow. That was a great catch and a spin move by Maydew. Uh, wasted no time getting that ball up there. 3-12 to go. Vikings got to put a stop to this little run here by Pratt. Carrington with it. Out to Gerlock. Gerlock off to Kira. Kira three-pointer. No. Rebound inside. Oh. April got the rebound and shot it when she was in the air. And then when she, or that was, yeah, that was April that shot it. And then Gerlock gets a rebound but stumbles and turns it over on the traveling call. Clark back in for the Vikings. Clark and Kierington and Kira and April and Gerlock on the court for the Vikings. Round it goes to Finch and baseline to Stats. That's on the dribble guarded by Kira Haxton. Good switch off on the defense there by Lana Clark to Hoover to McGowan. Inside to Maydew. She's been in the lane too long. And I don't know if that was a shot or just a throw pass to herself. But it's a turnover. And the Vikings come away with it. Kira with it on the dribble still. Over to the side of the wing. Wanted to go top to Carrington. Goes to Clark. Back to Carrington out top. Carrington on the dribble still. Gets it off to Gerlock. Gerlock all the way over to Kira. Two minutes left. First half. Gerlock, long two, missing rebound. Carrington comes up with it, and Carrington's fouled. And Carrington will have two free throws. Stats guilty of the foul. Her first team second. Just two team fouls on each team. Uh, yeah, just our first free throws, right? Yeah, it is. So much for getting those tall girls in any foul trouble. And Carrington makes the first free throw. That's the first Viking points since the 640 mark. And it's 156 left now. Well, important for the Vikings to go on a little run here to see if we can get some points. Close this gap a little bit. Second free throw also good. She got them both. Big free throws. Well, the girls have really improved their free throw shooting. Now you got to get some stops here. McGowan with it on the dribble screen from Maydew. McGowan at the free throw line, missing. Rebound, Carrington. Carrington slows it down as she comes across the timeline to her sister, Kira. Minute 40 left to go. Vikings trail by five. Carrington has it partially blocked. Lana gets the rebound. Back out to Carrington. Her drive in the lane. No. Rebound. Tied up. And on alternating possession, it will go to Pratt. But good effort by the Vikings to fight for that rebound. Yeah, absolutely. A couple great looks there by Carrington. Timeout on the court as the Vikings want to use one of theirs to talk it over. 17-12, Pratt leads back right after this. Crispy green donuts are 50 cents each. They're also selling those by the dozen for $6. And they are delicious. At Smoky Valley Gym, Don Binks and along with Carson Byers, Jared Bass working the controls for us once again. Pratt gets it out of the alternating possession tie-up. It'll be their ball here with a minute 25 left to go, leading by five. Stats across the timeline, looking for McGowan, not there. Backdoor cut, oh, steal by Kira. Kira with the steal, up and good. Kira gets her first points of the night. 14 for the Vikings, down only by three now. I don't know what she did out there. I was marking something in my book, and here she just to take it away from her? Yeah, she just poked it away on the dribble. McGowan has it tied up, goes off to Stats. That's kick it out to Rasmussen, her shot. Boy, nothing. She has got the hot hand tonight. 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of their nineteen points belongs to Rasmussen. Forty seconds left. Vikings trail by five. Off to April. April back out top to Gerlock. Almost threw it over her head. Gerlock gets double team. Gets it over to Kira. Kira baseline to Kirrington. Double team gets it out to Gerlock. Back to Kira. Back to Clark, back to Carrington. Her three, no, rebound, April. Oh, and she takes it away by Rasmussen. She had the rebound, but Rasmussen grabbed it out of midair. Off it goes to Stats, Stats with it. Back to Rasmussen. Rasmussen on the dribble, three seconds left. Stats, got away with the travel. No, got away with, Vikings got away with the foul. And we go to halftime with our scorer. Pratt, 19, Smoky Valley, 14. Back with the wrap-up of the half right after this. The Old Stuga in downtown Lidsborg is celebrating 40 years in business. Home of the famous Brent Nelson Sandwich. Visit them on South Main Street. Go Vikings and go Swedes. Do you know what major TV networks, Hall of Fame athletes, wineries, pubs, famous chefs, and brides and grooms from across the country have in common? They all purchase custom-etched glassware at glassdecorators.com. Emsloy glassdecorators.com have been providing carefully etched glass for nearly 30 years. An effective tool for company branding, etched glasses are also perfect for school and civic groups, special occasions, and that one-of-a-kind gift they won't find anywhere else. Emsloy Scandinavian Specialties and glassdecorators.com. Supporting Smoky Valley Athletics since 1984. At State Farm, when home and auto work together as a team, you score time and money. Call State Farm agent Anthony Hopkins, 785-472-4426 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I really appreciate the faculty and staff here at Bethany. They care about their students and they're helping them achieve their goals and to be successful. This is a Christian-based college and I felt that he was in the right hands when I left him here. We chose Bethany College so my son could have a good life. If you want inspired learning at an affordable price, choose Bethany College. Learn more about your good life at bethanylb.edu. This is the Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic Halftime Show. A first half recap. Scores from around the area and keys to a second half win. This is Smoky Valley Vikings basketball on 95.5 The Rock. Basketball travels to Anderson is coming Tuesday. The Smoky Valley Huskies are in action. And welcome back to Smoky Valley Gym. The halftime brought to you by... Yeah, the halftime show is brought to you by Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic, working with athletes of every level to help prevent injuries, enhance performance, or to heal, heal through surgery and rehabilitation. At the school, on the field, or in our clinic, they are ready wherever and whenever you need us to help you get back in the game. The home field advantage starts at Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. 19 for Pratt, 14 for Smoky Valley. Scoring went like this, stats with two... May do a six and 11 for Rasmussen. For the Vikings, Haven Shugren, two. Lindsey Gerlock, two. Kira Haxton, two. And eight for Carrington Haxton. So both teams have limited people that have scored, but uh, their leading scorer hasn't scored. Our leading scorer hasn't scored. It's kind of odd. It is. The Vikings did a really good job on McGowan, uh, putting a lot of different girls on her, throwing a lot of different <laughs> zones at her as well. And, Okay. Uh, offensively, they held Pratt's 38% uh, shooting, which is uh, pretty good there, and forced six turnovers. The Vikings only shot 30% themselves. They had eight turnovers. Um, so uh, defensively, a pretty good quarter for the Vikings for the most part. I thought they battled well as well as they can down low, and offensively just got to get some things going. Yeah, it seems like the girls that have height on us, and both the Hoover girl and the Maydew girl are tall girls. or They're pretty good-sized girls, yeah. so they... They do a good job, and we really have rebounded and kept the ball active, and uh, we just hope we can keep it up for another half. Yeah, that 1-3-1 one, one zone gave us a little bit of trouble. We got it to the corner sometimes, got trapped too easily, You know, had a few turnovers that way. You just got to keep the ball moving quickly against that zone and get try to get it to the middle there. Lana Clark at the high post, You know, try to get it in, in, to, in there to her, and that'll open up those outside shots. It does, and you just got to keep it out. We've got them out of their zone. They've played a little bit more man than Coach said they were used to playing, so 
See what happens with that here in the second half. Again, our score, 19-14. Vikings trail. Also going on, the Smoky Valley girls softball team is having a uh, Krispy Kreme donut sale. we got a couple of samples here we got to take. Oh, so we're going to take a timeout, eat our donuts, and we'll be right back. Area athletes and even weekend warriors have a big home field advantage. Salina Regionals Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. Working with athletes of every level to help prevent injuries or to heal through surgery and rehabilitation. You can count on Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic to get you back in the game. Led by orthopedic surgeon Dr. Timothy Hawks and sports medicine physician Dr. Matthew Pyle, along with an A-team of certified athletic trainers and physical therapists, Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic supports five area high schools, providing their athletes the highest quality, most timely care. At the school, on the field, or in our clinic, we're ready wherever and whenever you need us to help you get back in the game and keep you in the game. Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. The home field advantage starts here. Visit us at salinaregionalsportsmedicine.com. Overhead Door Company of North Central Kansas invites you to visit their website at odcnck.com. Once there, you can look over the products that Overhead Door offers for commercial and residential insulation and repair. Overhead Door Company services all of North Central Kansas. Game day starts and finishes at Farley's Bar and Grill in downtown Lindsborg. Located at 101 North Main, this upscale, one-of-a-kind establishment offers a wide variety of drink and food specials. Come try their jalapeno poppers, coconut chicken tenders, or their classic Monte Crisco. Then wash it down with an ice cold beer or tall glass of wine. Farley's Bar and Grill at the corner of Lincoln and Main in downtown Lindsborg. Farley's, your game day headquarters for the Smoky Valley Vikings and Bethany Swedes. Lowest rates, flexible plans, exceptional customer service, and coverage for everywhere you are. Say goodbye to being just a number. Say hello to something different at Next Tech Wireless. And welcome back to Smoky Valley Gym. Don Bing's along with Carson Byers with you. <laughs> it is halftime in the Vikings Trail, 19 to 14. Games coming up the rest of the we or rest of the season, actually. Vikings travel to Nickerson on Tuesday, down to Halstead on Friday and then finish up with the, one of the longest road trips of the year all the way down to Haven to their new gym. But three games on the road, and the Viking guys have a little bit better chance than the girls because the girls, the three teams, including the four teams, including the team tonight, are all state ranked. So they're going to have to really start playing. But I'm really pr proud of the way the girls have played here in this first half. Yeah, they, they did a good job to, to put themselves in position to compete in the second half. So they're going to have to start shooting the ball a little bit better. Hopefully some of those Arn Reiner CPA three-pointers can go down in the second half. But, yeah. yeah, keep battling on the on the defensive end like you've been doing, it, and the shots will fall. Have we shot many three-pointers? I don't – did we take like one or two? Is that all we've taken? Yeah, yeah, maybe a little more than that. But, you know, the, I'm not, I don't want them to shoot a lot of threes. I don't think they should, but – if, if, you, if you're able to score inside and attack the, bus, the basket, those outside shots, you know, we'll start to open up a little more. We'll take a final one-minute timeout. When we come back, we'll have a tip-off of the second half. You're listening to Smoky Valley Basketball. Area athletes and even weekend warriors have a big home field advantage. Salina Regional's Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. Working with athletes of every level to help prevent injuries or to heal through surgery and rehabilitation. You can count on Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic to get you back in the game. Led by orthopedic surgeon Dr. Timothy Hawks and sports medicine physician Dr. Matthew Pyle. Along with an A-team of certified athletic trainers and physical therapists, Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic supports five area high schools, providing their athletes the highest quality, most timely care. At the school, on the field, or in our clinic, we're ready wherever and whenever you need us to help you get back in the game and keep you in the game. Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. The home field advantage starts here. 
visit us at salinaregionalsportsmedicine.com. to Smoky Valley Gym. Don Binks along with Carson Byers. We got Jared Bass working the controls for us once again. Again, our halftime score, Smoky Valley 19, trails 19 to 14. Smoky Valley 14. And a good effort by Pep Band members tonight. They get recognized tonight as well. There's a bunch of seniors up there in that group. So we have senior cheerleaders, senior band members, senior basketball girls, senior basketball boys. We've got a big list that you'll have to read off at halftime. Oh, awesome. It's good to see a lot of seniors out there. First possession belongs to the Vikings. Kira Carrington, Claire Broxman, Ellie Brumbaugh, and April on the court. Here's Ellie Brumbaugh, three-pointer right off the bat. No, too strong rebound. Number five in there, that's Fincham, gets a start for Pratt in the second half. It's a screen from Maydew. Fincham at the dribble. Baseline corner. Stats, drive, shot, good. Stats, just her second basket of the game, but it's 21-14 now. Pratt at the 7.30 mark. Neither team scored for almost four minutes of the first quarter, but... Pratt knocks down an early shot here. April gets double team, gets it off to Broxham and back to Kira, back to April. April double, they double team everything. As soon as they get the one pass, they double team it out of this zone. Quickly over to Kira, she'll launch a three ball. Good! You called it, an Arn Reiner CPA three pointer by Kira Haxton. Gets the Vikings on the board at the seven minute mark. Oh. Maydew is still with it. Good defense by Ellie Brumball. Around it goes to Fincham, two stats, knocked away, and oh, out of bounds. I thought they were going to have a foul on stats, but instead, Kira evidently hit the out of bounds line, and it'll stay with the Pratt Greenbacks. Got some scores I'll try to get to you here in a minute. Halftime Minneapolis over southeast of Saline, 20 to 19. Salina Central over south, 22 17. Made or Hoover on the dribble drive, give and go, no, but gets own rebound, no, Maydew over the back, uh, but the Vikings come away with the rebound, Kira comes away with it finally, cross court from to her sister Carrington, three pointer, two strong, rebound, Stats over Ellie Brumbaugh, Stats in transition, gets it off to McGowan, she's going to launch a three ball, no, rebound, Maydew, we just can't compete yeah. with that. May do with another big rebound and put back 23-17 at the six-minute mark. Ellie gets it stolen away from her and a travel on stats. Boy, they're letting them play. I'll tell you, there's a lot of contact that's going uncalled. It'd get a little rough in the guys' game if they don't call a few fouls. I see Coach Keith Ferguson of the Bethany College Swedes over there. He might be recruiting one of these big girls. He should be if he's not. Carrington on the dribble, gets it out to Ellie. Ellie dribble drive, penetration, her shot. There you good. It's go. a good looking shot by Ellie off the, off the pick there in the short corner. And the book for the first time tonight, Ellie was in double yeah, figures the other night. Going. Need to get her going. Finch him off to Maydew. Not Maydew, McGowan, my bad. McGowan on the dribble. Around it goes to Rasmussen. Back to Fincham, the screen from Maydew. Fincham, got away with the travel inside to Hoover. Her shot up, missing, rebound. Ellie Brumbaugh comes away with it. Ellie in the front court on the penetration. Has it stripped by McGowan. Two on two break, McGowan with it, shoot, and she's fouled. Ellie mad that she got it stripped away, but hustles back to get back and picks up her first foul. Hey, good to see Ellie not in foul trouble. No kidding. Here out there. McCowan, the leading scorer, gets her first chance at free throws tonight and knocks it right down. 24-19, still a five-point margin for the Pratt Greenbacks at the 5.08 mark. 
of the third quarter. And she got them both. Their leading scorer with her first points of the night coming at the 5.08 mark. Got some more scores that are popping up on my phone. Sacred Heart leads Council Grove 14 to 11 after one quarter. Abilene 21, Wamego 13 at halftime. Here's Kierington has it, almost loses the handle, but there's a double team in the deep corner, but gets out of it. Off to Bryant. Bryant, little floater, got yeah. the roll. Vikings are getting some buckets on the offensive end. Now you gotta put together some stops. 21-25, down only by four. Bryant with her first points also in the ball game. Uh -oh. That's a three. By. That's three by McGowan. McGowan hits, she got, finally got loose. 28-21 now. Kira off to Gerlock. Gerlock cross court to Bryant. Got to throw some of those cross court passes to stay open. Baseline corner and out top to Bryant. Can you save it? She does. Yeah. Wow, I thought it hit the line. Kira dribble on Bryant. Carrying 10. Dribble drive. Baseline. Underneath her shot blocked by Maydu. Coach Vanderwigs with the official right beside him is like, wow, that was a big hard slam without any foul call. Maydu was smiling. She knew she got away with it. Not having a foul. 99 out of 100 times, that's a foul. But tonight is not is the one time it's not a foul. Carrington loses the handle but saves the possession. Off to Brockstrom and right at the free throw line. No. Rebound Carrington out to Kira. Three-pointer. Yes! Arn Reinert's, Arn Reinert's CPA three-pointer by Kira Haxton. And there's another McGowan three. Yeah. 24-31. Lots of scoring all of a sudden going on. Here's Bryant. She has it stolen away. And on alternating possession, it goes back up to turnover on the Vikings number... 10. Huge threes there from McGowan as the Vikings are starting to figure things out offensively. Now, all of a sudden, they can't get some stops. Does Kira have two threes? Yes. Yes, she had both of those. 24 for the Vikings. They've scored 10 in this quarter, but Pratt also finding the range. There's a block by Carrington, or Kira. Kira on the run. Kira. Yes. Kira has suddenly come to life. 26. 31, Vikings trail by five at the three minute mark. Her stats, her shot, good. Trading buckets. Yeah, gotta get some stops. 33-26, seven point lead. They come out with that trap and they get the steal. Off it goes to McGowan. McGowan, shot, fouled. Finally, there's a foul on the shot. And it's McCowan again that gets it. And she's back to the free throw line for two more free throws. Gerlock guilty of the foul. And a timeout on the court will step aside as well. 2.33 left to go. Third quarter, Pratt 33, Smoky Valley 26. Back right after this. At Mocha's, they get it. They understand your morning cup... Smoky Valley Gym, two and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Vikings trail, 33-26. But they haven't gone on one of those scoring droughts yet, so they kind of hanging in there, but they really need to get some stops. Suddenly, Pratt has really 
up the ante on the offensive end. Yeah, the Vikings have been playing really well here in this third quarter offensively, but a couple McGowan threes have kind of kept that lead for Brad. Can't quite get over the hump for the Vikings. Two more McGowan free throws. That one finds the bottom of the net. It hit the front edge. I didn't think it was going to go in, but did. 34. And that one hits the front rim and goes out. Hoover knocks it out of bounds, so it stays with Smoky Valley. 2.33 left to go here. Clark in, Brockstroman out. Claire Brockstroman has not scored yet, but she battles. She's the one that's got the most size to battle with Pratt inside. They go 2-1-2, trapping defense. They trap out of that. Vikings trap out of the 1-3-1 a lot. Kira with it. Going to launch another three ball. No. Too strong. Rebound. Loose on the floor. Picked up by Kira. Kira still with the dribble. Goes out to Gerlock. Gerlock over to Brumball. On the weave. She'll come near side to Kira. They're spreading them out a little bit. Here's Gerlock. She's going to launch a three ball. No. Rebound McGowan. Good looking shot. I'll take that. But it didn't go. Two minutes left. Vikings down by eight. Stats with the dribble drive. Penetration. Now kick out to McCowan. Over to Rasmussen. Rasmussen dribble. Kick out to McCowan. Another three ball. Another make. Man. She's got 12 Ouch. all of a sudden. Yeah, we're bragging about having her scoreless at halftime. And now she's got her average quickly up to Gerlock. And it goes out of bounds. Vikings turn it over. Number 12. What had been a pretty good, well-played game now suddenly is getting away from the Vikings on turnovers just a little bit. Still not as many as we have some games. But now we're down on the scoreboard by 11, 37 to 26. They're having a big quarter. This is an 18-point quarter of which 16, 14 of them belong to McCowan. Now Rasmussen picks up. She had not scored. She had 11 at halftime. That pushes the lead to 39-26. Baseline to Clark. Clark with it to Shugan, who checked in. Ellie, she's got looked at a three, didn't trigger. To Gerlock. Gerlock into Clark, has it knocked away by McGowan. And she knocks it out of bounds, stays with the Vikings. April back in. Gerlock out. April, Clark, Shugan, Brumbaugh, and Kira Haxton into April. April out to Shugan has it knocked away by Stats. Turnover Vikings. Stats all the way in. Shot. Damn. Good to go. Boy, she got fouled, but made the shot. They're just finishing everything. 41 now. Boy, it's a 10-0 run from, since the Vikings scored their last point. Out it goes to Kira, and she'll have it lose the handle out, and backcourt it goes. Suddenly, the Vikings are coming unraveled. The wheels are coming off the bus. Yeah, and it was their best offensive quarter of the game, and now they find they find themselves trailing by the most they've trailed all game. Would not have expected that. No, not as well as they were playing that first half. This, this last half of this third quarter has been a challenge. Rasmussen from Maydew. They'll reset outside the Vikings 2-3 zone. Near side it comes to Fincham. To Hoover. Back to Fincham. Back to McCowan. Three ball corner. No. Rebound. Vikings. Finally missed the three ball. Here's Clark with it. Side of the lane. Kick out the Brum ball. Drive. Shot. No. Rebound. Fincham inside. And here comes Pratt on the run with 10 seconds left to go. Rasmussen, dump inside to Maydew. Her wow. shot. No. Rebound Vikings. Kira's going to throw it the length of the court. And no good. And third quarter is in the books. Vikings trail. 41-26. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this. People's Bank Control.
pep band. I'll let you finish up my text yes. message on all the wrecking and media scoreboard show stations. Vikings get the first possession of the fourth quarter. Karen trapping gets it off to Maria. April, far side corner. April on the dribble gets it off and stolen by Fincham. Almost a steal by Carrington. Vikings with it now on defense. They've got to get something going. Inside Maydew has it knocked away. There's still only two fouls on the Vikings and none on Pratt. And there's a travel on Pratt. That's turnover number. I just have it seven. I think that's their, is that their first of the half? I think it is. Man, they just had a clinic of a third quarter offensively. The Vikings need to put a clinic on. They got a couple of Kira Hacks and three-pointers, but Maydew had three, or McGowan had three, and they had 22 points in that quarter. Here's Carrington on the dribble out to Ellie, out to Kira, back to Carrington, baseline three, no, rebound Brockstrom, get out to Ellie, Ellie cross court to Carrington, to Kira, inside to Brockstrom, her shot from six, no, rebound Pratt. One minute gone, fourth quarter, Vikings trail 41-26, inside to Maydew, knocked away, no, Maydew ends up with it, and Maydew gets it to go, she's now in double figures with 10. 43-26. Carrington, baseline, kick out to Kira. She's gonna launch a three ball, no, rebound, Ellie. The long carom goes to the Vikings. Inside to Carrington, Carrington cut off and Pratt steals it, but she's out of bounds. It'll stay with the Vikings. Uh, Smoky Valley ball underneath their own basket. 6.29 to go fourth quarter, but they trail 43 to 26. They got their 26 point, about the three minute mark of the fourth of the third quarter. Brumball wanted to trigger, but now will trigger at the elbow. No, and she's fouled. First foul on Pratt of the second half. And Ellie Brumball will have two free throws. Ellie's really good off the shot fake, able to, to go on the bounce there. Draw a foul on the Pull up free throw line, Jay. And Brumbaum misfires on the free throw. It's senior night here. We'll be recognizing all the seniors between games. Vikings looking for their fifth win of the year, but probably not going to happen unless we have a super, super, super rally here in the fourth quarter. Bryant in April out. 27-43. The 16 point deficit. Like scored 12 in that third quarter. And you start shooting them up early and often. Maydew got away with the travel and threw the ball away, but Ellie couldn't hang on to it. Too short a pass coming that hard for her to handle. Good that she got in the right spot, but too bad she couldn't come away with the steal. Pratt will put it in play underneath their own basket. That, oh, backdoor cut by Rasmussen. Wide open. She is having a career night, I believe. Off it goes to Ellie. Baseline Carrington. She shoots it up and she's fouled. And Carrington will have two free throws. Back to back. Trips to the line. A rare trip to Carr the line tonight. Carrington could get double figures if she makes both free throws. That is Maydew's first foul for all the over-the-back rebounding she does. Pretty amazing. And Carrington, three of three free throws tonight. Well, what I do like about this officiating is they've been consistent with it. Oh, they're, yeah. letting, they're letting things go on both ends. And the Viking boys action coming up later. Pratt coming in with a five and... 11 record. Mookie Valley coming in with a 7-9 and nine record. Haxon gets in double figures. She makes them both. 29 for the Vikings, but 45 for Pratt. Rasmussen outside with it. Near side it comes to Fincham. Back to Rasmussen outside. Back to Fincham. A little two-man catch there. Out to Rasmussen. Rasmussen back to Stats. Her three missing. Rebound Carrington. 
Carrington right to the side of the lane. Now to the deep corner. Gets trapped. Gets it off to Brumball. Brumball, little floater, side of the lane. Yeah. Good. Ellie hey, knocks it down for 31 for the Vikings. 45 for Pratt. Off to McGowan. Inside to Maydew. Maydew kick out two stats. Stats dribble drive, side of the lane. Her little floater. It's good. 47 at the five minute mark for Pratt. 31 for Smoky Valley. Uh, it goes to Bryant. Her long two. Got the Browns. Got the basket. Good pass by Ellie Brumbaugh to go cross court there to Ashlyn Bryant. She stepped into the mid range jumper. Fincham. Cross court to Stats. Oh, almost a steal by Carrington. Here's McCowan with a three. Missing. Rebound Ellie Brumbaugh. Brumbaugh on the runaway race. And she gets hit from behind. Out of bounds to the Vikings. A lot of contact. Again, consistent. No foul called. 424 to go. Fourth quarter. Kira puts it in to Brumbaugh. Brumbaugh. Little floater again. Short. Rebound. Last touch by Green. It'll be Viking basketball underneath their own basket again. Kira will play it and put it in play. Kira guarded by a tall Rasmussen. Her long arms gives her a little difficult to pass it in, but gets it into Bryant. Bryant with a little penetration off to Kirrington. Shot, wow. no. Rebound Pratt. Quickly up to Stats. Stats. And... Well, what was not called in the first half got called on that time on Ellie. She just kind of bodied up to Stats. Stats made the shot, gets the foul called, has a chance for an and one. 49-26. Could uh, be 50 if they make it. How many players does Pratt have in double figures now? I'll tell you in a minute. I got three, I think. Stats has double figures. Rasmussen has double figures. And McC Gowan has double figures. They have three players in double figures. No, they actually have and four. May, and Maydew. Maydew yeah, has okay. double figures as well. So they've got yeah. four players in double figures. Maydew. Only four that have scored. Well, they're having their way here at Smoky Valley Gym. Four minutes left. 50 to 33. Bryant, three ball off. Rebound. Hustling for it is stats and... April and last touch by Stats. It'll stay with the Vikings. Good hustle by both girls. Vikings doing a good job with these skip passes in the fourth quarter against this trap zone. And the Vikings want to talk it over. 3.51 remaining fourth quarter. 50-33. to 33. Pratt leads the Vikings back after this. Timeout. Smoky Valley. Always a pleasure to hear the Smoky Valley pep band under the direction of who's the director? Adam Keller. Adam Keller. I had it in my mind, and then I lost it. I knew you would know. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don Binks, along with Carson Byers, Jared Bass, working the controls for us once again, doing a great job as always. Guys, action coming up next, but senior recognition coming up at between games as well. Bryant with it on the dribble, guarded by Fincham, pressured by Fincham. And he's going to have to get it off and does, gets it back to Rasmus, or from April. Bryant on the dribble, kick out to Carrington, looked at a three, now drive inside, shot, no, rebound. April had it, but Rasmussen again took it away from her. Rasmussen's got some good hands. 
Stats. Fincham playing a little two-man catch. Now Andrew Rasmussen elevates her shot. Good. We just can't... When you're about four or five inches shorter than your opponent, it's hard to match up. It is. Rasmussen with her. And Pratt does a really good job at using their size and, and keeping the ball high. Here's Bryant. Her shot missing. Last touch by Pratt. Out of bounds to Smoky Valley. Bryant. Brumbaugh and Carrington coming out. Vikings are going to honor their seniors here as they have all five seniors in the game right now. Let them play a little bit for honoring them as they, he'll pull them out in a little bit. Out to Gerlock. Gerlock on the dribble. Back to Kira. Kira into Clark. Back to Gerlock. Her long two. No rebound. Pratt. Stats, one of the little girls on the court, sure has come up with a lot of loose ball rebounds. Stats. It's about to finch him. He's going to launch a three ball. No rebound inside Hoover. Gets it out to McGowan. Her shot. Wow. Hits the front of the rim and then crawls over and goes in. Can do no wrong. 21 point lead. Pratt 53 or 54 to 33. Gerlock with it. Goes across to Kira. Baseline to April. Her shot. No, but she's fouled. And Maria April will get a chance at two free throws. And no good. Another Rasmussen. Rachel Rasmussen checks in for the first time, as does F. Helf, Helfrich? How do you, how would you pronounce it? Helfrich? Yeah, Helfrich. April free throw. Got it to go. She's in the scorebook with one point. 54-34. Vikings trail. Off it goes to Helfrich. Give and go to Rasmussen inside a foul. And two free throws coming up for... Lana Clark guilty of the foul only the third foul or fourth foul now on the Vikings and two free throws coming up for Rasmussen she make that or miss she missed I don't know which one of the Rasmussen's, Caitlin number 23 or 12, which one's older? Uh, 12 yeah, 23. 23 is older. Okay. It's the one that's played the She's most. She's the senior. Here are the Vikings with two minutes left. Trail by 20, 54-34. Still a good effort by Smoky Valley tonight. Inside it goes to Clark. Clark with it, out to Kira. Launch a three, no. Going to drive, kick out to Shugan. She will launch a three, rattling in and then out. And April gets the rebound, and she's fouled. And out of bounds to Smoky Valley. Foul is going to be on Fincham, number five. That's her second foul. Credit to, to April and Clark. I thought they've done a good job battling for offense rebounds, even when they don't get them. Doing a good job, keeping the ball alive they're, down there. They're fighting with them, no question about that. Get it into Shugan. Back to Kira. Off to Clark. Clark with a shot. She's fouled. And Lana will be at the free throw line shooting two. See if she can get in the scorebook tonight. Clark free throw short. Second, Lana Clark free throw. On the way, good. Lana got a point tonight. 35 for the Vikings. 54, minute 35 left to go. Elrich gets it off to Fincham, back to McCowan. McCowan dribble drive, kick out, knocked away by Shugan, saved by McGowan. McGowan on the dribble, knocked away, saved by Elfrich. Cross court to Maydew. Her shot, good. Maydew. She's a really good 
finisher down low. She's got a dozen, 56, 35, 105 to go. Shugan, long two, in and out, no good, rebound Rasmussen. Quickly, McGowan in the front court. McGowan wanted to launch a three, does, and swishes another three. 59 to 35. Final score is going to be a much closer, <laughs> or not indicative of the way the Vikings have played tonight. Kind of got away from a mid-third quarter, but they certainly have put an effort together. April kicks it out to Kira. Kira cross court to Gerlock. Baseline to Clark. Clark with it on the dribble. Clark gets tripped, loses the handle. Ball picked up by April. Maria April picks it up. Shot. Yeah. Good. Good finish. And a substitute out. Claire Broxerman coming in. Kaylee Ryan coming in. One by one, they're going to honor all five seniors. Ellie Brumbaugh coming in. Carrington Paxton coming in. And Bryant coming in. All five seniors get a check out. Honored by their coach in a very good job. Kira ends up with six, eight. Kira ended up with ten. Last 15 seconds. Pratt will have it. See if they shoot or not. Probably not. McCowan outside with it. On the dribble now. Top of the key. Cross court goes to Helfrich. Four seconds, three, two, one, and that'll do it. Our final score from Smoky Valley Gym. Smoky Valley loses 59-37. We'll be back to wrap this one up after this timeout. All of the patients are